Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and a very late review of the Bahrain Grand Prix which happened on Sunday. This is actually technically Monday. Unfortunately, I was working so I couldn't watch it live but I have now caught up and it is half two in the morning and I'm quite tired but we'll talk about it quickly anyway. And oh my god, Roman Grosjean. This may be the last few races of his Formula 1 career. And that was a very scary accident that he had. Um, as soon as it goes up in flames, it kind of does bring you back to those horrible 70s crashes where you know, we saw Nicky Lauda severely injured and Roger Willey Anson die and many, many more. Luckily, he was okay. I think he has broken ribs and some minor burns. And Haas have said that if he wants to drive next week, he can. I would be surprised if he gets cleared medically, but I guess we'll see. I hope I hope he does make it to the next, well, last two races of the year, because this will probably be his last two Formula One races, and he deserves to go out on the track, not on fire. But that was a fucking scary accident. So we'll discuss that and more, so sit back, relax, and let's begin. Welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Okay, so Grosjean's accident was hideous. I mean, his car split in half and it was on fire. And If you've seen the pictures of the aftermath, there's not a lot left of it. He was very lucky to walk away. And that brought out the red flag and we had like a hour race delay. Which is fair enough, they got to repair the barrier. Some marshals were very lucky not to be impaled on a Formula 1 car. So, safety car leads him out. Race gets underway and then Lance Stroll immediately goes on his roof. So we have two massive accidents at the start of a Grand Prix. It's pretty shocking stuff. Is this just the end of year, get out of your system kind of thing? Daniel Kvyat's involved in both incidents, but neither are really his fault. So I hope he doesn't get punished. But he does have a reputation for this sort of thing. But it, it weren't his fault. I mean, the Stroll one was more his fault than the Grosjean one. But they're both racing incidents, so he's not to blame. And unfortunately, after those two big crashes and Bottas getting a puncture and proving that as mediocre as I think he is, he is also the unluckiest racer in Formula 1. But he dropped to the back and really from there the race was just another Formula 1 race. There was no real battles or anything. There was a few places swapped in the midfield, cars going in the pits and swapping places. Nothing much else happened until the last few laps when Sergio Perez, I think, had a turbo failure or something, and he burst into flames as well. Really, really sad for him, because again, this might be his last few Formula 1 races, and he was definitely the driver of the day. He was doing well in third, not really being challenged by anyone on his own. He did not deserve to retire from this race, and this was a disaster for Racing Point, who were going for third in the Constructors, and they ended up with no points, throwing away a podium in the last few laps. It's a really big shame for them. And it kind of left McLaren to pick up the pieces because they got a good 4th and 5th finish. So McLaren are currently 3rd in the Constructors' Championship. Although it's pretty close between them, Racing Point and Renault. As is 4th place in the Championship because Daniel Ricciardo finished 7th. Which I think there's only 4 points between Daniel Ricciardo in 4th and Charles Leclerc in 6th. And I don't think Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz and Alexander Albon are too far behind either. So the battle for 4th is what we're looking at with Formula 1 towards the end of the year. It's all pretty exciting, I guess. It's the midfield. The midfield tends to be the best part of Formula 1. And they are all great drivers. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out in 4th. And to that point, Alexander Albon. Pretty good drive to finish 3rd. He would have fourth, finished 4th if um, Perez had finished. But it's the second podium of his career, so... If this is his last few races in Formula 1, it's a good way to start the end of your career in you know, in Formula 1, whatever. 
if he can get another couple of good results, he may convince Red Bull to keep him on. I don't think Red Bull would do too badly to take on Perez. I think he's a very good driver. I think he'll push Verstappen a bit more than Albon does. But I can't see Red Bull hiring out of their outside of their pool of drivers. I think they will stick with Albon for another year. And if it doesn't work out, they can swap him with Gasly again. Um, I do think Kvyat will definitely go. Um, I, they seem to have their eyes on Yuki Tsunoda. And I didn't watch the Formula 2 races, but I did look up the results. And I think Yuki Tsunoda had a pretty average weekend. And I think he's in fifth. I think he needs to finish in the top six to get his super license. Um, I think he's around about 15 points ahead of Louis Delatraz. So it's durable. And obviously the championship ends next week. But I think he needs to have a good weekend just to secure it. If he does, I think he'll be in a Formula 1 seat next year. So he's got a lot to drive for. Maybe a bit of pressure on him. Well, who knows? Um, as for Formula 1, there isn't really much else to say. It was another dominant win for Hamilton. He wasn't really challenged. Um, they were joking. The commentators were joking that Mercedes is like two seconds a lap faster. I'm not sure that's a joke. That does seem to be the truth. Um, Bottas was useless. I can't imagine Verstappen beating him for second. But if it happened, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. Uh, as it was, I don't really like Bahrain as a track. I mean, it wasn't really an exciting race. It had a couple of exciting moments, I guess. And we're back there next week, but it is a different track layout. We're doing the outer track, which I think is faster, so we'll play more into Mercedes' hands. I saw Toto Wolff come out with some bullshit about Ferrari having a better car in 2018 and 2019. They didn't. Mercedes have had the best car since 2014, and nothing's come close to them. Ferrari was slightly faster in 2018 and maybe 2019, but that does not translate to better car. And here's money about um, they wanted to equalise the regulations. And I can see both sides of that. I mean, he is right. We don't want this to turn into a GT3 style. You know, everyone's butchered to the point where anyone can win, but it's not really Formula 1 when it's like that. I don't blame Mercedes for having this massive advantage but I do think the FIA need to find fair ways to sort of bring the pack back up to them a little bit and it'll be interesting to see how they do that so I think we're pretty much in you know the home stretch there's only really a couple of weekends left of motorsport action in general because there's only really four championships left going because Rallycross got ended early fair enough so we only have Formula 1, Formula 2, the World Rally Championship, and Super Formula. All of which are on next weekend. So, next weekends are packed out. You know, clear your schedule for Saturday and Sunday because there's lots of motorsport. But Formula 2 and WRC end next week. And then Formula 1 and Super Formula end a couple of weeks after that. And there's a lot to play for in WRC. Because it's um, Elflin Evans versus Sebastian Ogier. I would never, ever have picked Elflin Evans to win the championship. But then 2020 has been kind of a topsy-turvy year. I kind of hope he does. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Super Formula. Nick Cassidy's not racing in the series, it looks like. He sat out the last couple of rounds of Super GT. And I think he missed the last Super Formula round. So I don't know if he'll be back for that. But I think there's a couple of new drivers who could win that. Formula 2. It looks like Mick Schumacher's. I think him and Callum Mylott had a sort of deadlock this weekend. So it'll be interesting to see the finale for that. And of course, Formula 1 will find out who finishes fourth. So that's it. That's my review of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and have a good one. <laughs>